allegory of Freemasonry we'll be examining today appears as the frontispiece of the historical landmarks and other evidences of Freemasonry explained in a series of practical lectures, which was published by the Reverend G. Oliver in London in 1846. The illustration itself was prepared by John Harris, the artist responsible for most of the common tracing boards in use throughout the English-speaking world today. In the centre of the design is seated a genius of masonry on the chequered surface of the earth. On his right is an ancient roll of the sacred law, the origin and foundation of the order. From this arises a broad, emblematical ray of light, whose three chief principles are faith, hope, and charity, the practice of which will ultimately lead the mason to the realms of bliss. Under his left hand are the two great fundamental principles of masonry, the perfect cube and the point of dedication in the circle between the parallels, thus further pointing out the perfection of mind and undeviating and circumscribed conduct to be observed by its members. The figure further indicates by the action of his pointing upwards, that order and perfection of form must emanate from on high, supposed to be calling the attention of the young craft in the foreground, who is attempting to form a perfect ashlar out of the rough mass, to the fact that the square and level are useless without the plumb and line, the descent of which is being approached and hailed by a third genius as the best gift to the order, and, further expressed by the female, the angelic spirit of masonry, descending towards the earth, emblematical of the emanation of masonry. The background represents a part of the universe, with the two great luminaries of nature, the sun and moon, and the seven stars are also displayed. The emblem of the all-creative power is partly hid under the border, whose name appears faintly through the brightness of his glory. On the left, are winged reptiles, emblems of darkness, etc., being warded off by masonry to return from whence they have received their being. To the right of the foreground is a simple construction of architecture, consisting of a plinth, pedestal, and part of a column, with the working tools of a fellow craft. Near the centre of the pavement are the working tools of the master mason with a plan on a scroll. The border which surrounds the whole is not only emblematical of the tessellated border, but also of the emblematical ribbon of the arch mason, denoting light, as does the symbol of the double square, the Maltese cross with the triangle, and the figure nine within it, also denoting the birth of light. At the four corners are the attributes of the four cardinal virtues, temperance, fortitude, prudence, and justice. On each side, and at the bottom, are introduced symbols of sublime masonry and theocratic philosophy. A pelican feeding its young, a double-headed eagle displayed, and the brazen serpent, the first recorded emblem of faith. As a whole, the design may be taken as a true symbol of masonry and a lodge. The three boys, representing the three degrees of the craft, and the female above, as the spirit or perfection of the royal arch, the sum and governing principle of the whole. They may further be taken as the representatives of the three rulers of a lodge, with the various jewels, working tools, etc., necessary for the working and conducting of same. <laughs>